Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind. None of me, all of you, in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen. amen. Wednesday night crew, welcome to Bible study tonight. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. You may be seated. And um, tonight's going to be very interesting because we're going to dig into the um, life of the Apostle Paul. Uh, we have been talking about how to interpret the Bible. And this is significant because we uh, learned, in just a little short review, we learned that in the Old Testament, the Old Testament was all about shadows and pictures. So when you read the Old Testament, it's a shadow of something uh, or someone, well, let's just tell you what, it, it, the Old Testament is a shadow and a picture of Jesus, okay? And so we, we've been talking about not studying shadows for the sake of shadows, and that's what's happening. When you read the Old Testament, you got to know this is a shadow of Jesus. This is a picture of Jesus. For example, the Sabbath was a day in the Old Testament, uh, but in the New Testament, the Bible makes it clear that the Sabbath is Jesus. And so uh, you, you read it like that, and it helps you to interpret properly. We also talk about the four Gospels. And the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were basically talking about the life of Jesus as uh, recorded by those four individuals. And uh, the four Gospels were as parables. And then um, uh, in the letters of the New Covenant, which we're going to talk about tonight, we're really going to dig into the life of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, rather than me telling you some of the things that you're familiar with, I want to take time and go into the Scriptures and show you some of these things that you've always heard maybe in church giving you an opportunity to see what the Apostle Paul had gone through. So let's go ahead and get started there. If you have your Bibles, go with me to, uh, <clears throat> let's see, where do we want to start here? Let's, let's, let's go to the book of Acts chapter 15, the book of Acts chapter 15. Now, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul was a Jewish man and he was a Pharisee, and he was zealous about the law of Moses. So you got to understand that something pretty significant had to happen to take this Jewish Pharisee who was very zealous about every jot and tittle of the law, and how do you change a guy who believed the way he believed and to get him to go against everything he ever knew, ever taught, and ever said, and now he's teaching the gospel. I want to show you. But, and, and in it, maybe you can pick out some things that would uh, really minister to you. So let's start off with the word apostle. Um, it includes the meaning a messenger, not just a messenger, but a messenger, one who goes on an errand with a message, an apostle. It includes with it the meaning a messenger, one who goes on an errand with a message. And the Apostle Paul definitely was that. He was one that went on a journey. He went on an errand with the message of grace. So Jesus chose Paul to be the, mess the messenger of the gospel of grace. And this was pretty, pretty new to a lot of folks. So the other, other apostles at the time knew about Paul's teaching, and I'm going to show you that eventually they approved it. But let's see how Paul went up to Jerusalem and, and to discuss his teachings he, to, with James and Peter and John. So I, I think what I'm going to do here tonight, I want to, I want to start in Acts chapter 9, and I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation, and then I'm going to ask the guys in the back to pull up the King James Translation on the screen. Acts chapter 9, and let's begin there. I think this will really help you out here a lot. Acts chapter 9, verse 15. Now, verse 15 says this. 
but the Lord said, uh, well, you, the, let, let, you, the story of Saul's conversion, that's all found in Acts chapter 9. Uh, it will come up if you've never thought about it. Who was the author of Acts? We all believe it was Luke. Uh, for a long time, I thought it was Paul, but it wasn't. It's, it's Luke telling his account um, of what he saw with the Apostle Paul's life. Now, that'll be significant uh, in a moment. So, chapter 9 starts off with uh, Saul threatening to put uh, uh, these guys in chains, uh, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. And, and uh, he was the one that was responsible and had uh, uh, Stephen killed. And in verse 3, as he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's amazing. Jesus says, you're, when you persecute all of those po folks you persecuted, you're persecuting me. And uh, this is, was so interesting for a guy who was a Pharisee and for a guy who knew the law, verse 5, he said, who are you? <laughs> now, you don't want to go to heaven and see Jesus and say, who are you? <laughs> all right? Who are you, Lord? Uh, Saul asked. And the voice replied, I'm Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. So here's Paul, a Pharisee. He has this encounter on the road to Damascus. And, um, and so when Paul got up, he realized that he couldn't see. And uh, so God had already got that set up for, uh, I think it was Ananias, that he was already talking to Ananias about going to Paul and laying hands on Paul. And the Bible says that Saul uh, picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. Uh, in verse 9, he remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink for three days, okay? So this, this is a conversion going on right now. And now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias and, and, Ananias, and the Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias <clears throat> to go and to, to lay hands on him. Verse 11, he went over straight <clears throat> uh, street to the house of Judas. And verse 11, when you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. God is so awesome that he was talking to somebody at the same time Paul was trying to figure out, but God had everything together. Turn to your neighbor and say, God got your back. God All right? He'll take care of you, right? Now, uh, but the Lord exclaimed, Ananias, he says, I heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. So he was persecuting the church. If you would call upon Jesus, Paul was the one who was leading the persecution against the church. Okay? That's why we can't ever afford to judge people. You don't know who God want to use. Amen? All right, now watch this. Now, let's begin here in verse 15. And so, but the Lord said, go, for, go for, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings as well as to the people of Israel. So, God chooses a, a, a murdering, persecuting, religious man. He calls him. Man, I got to stop right there. No, you, you wouldn't have called him. I wouldn't have called him. We'd have said, you ain't, you ain't holy enough. But God called him and, 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 and start preparing him. In other words, God can use anybody amen. if you'll just believe, amen? And, and notice, he didn't even believe. When Jesus showed up, he said, who are you? He says, I'm Jesus, the one you're persecuting. All right, and he says, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. And then in verse 20 and 21, uh, he says, And immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is indeed the Son of God. Verse 21, And all who heard him were amazed, 
isn't this the same man who caused such devastation amongst Jesus' followers in Jerusalem, they asked? And didn't he come here to arrest them and to take them and to change to, lead, to, to the leading priest? This is the same guy that he's getting ready to use to write, I mean, the, the, largest, the largest part of the New Testament. All right? Now, let's visit just for a moment. Uh, mm, let's look at the book of Acts. So he's preaching this gospel. Let's go to Acts 15. And let's start at verse 1. Acts 15, verse 1. He says, While Paul and Barnabas were at Antioch, Antioch of Syria, some men from Judea arrived and began to teach the believers. And this is what they taught the believers. Unless you are circumcised as required by the law of Moses, you cannot be saved. All right? So they were still trying to teach the law. And Paul was like, no, that ain't how I got it. I have met Jesus. And if you'll read verse 2, Paul and Barnabas disagreed with them, arguing vehemently, <laughs> you know. And then finally the church decided to send Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem so they can get with the apostles and so that they would see what they would do about this. Now, all their life, all they heard was the law of Moses. All their life, all they heard was you got to be circumcised. All their life, all they ever heard were, were, was everything that was about that Old Testament. And then Jesus shows up, interrupts this guy's life, and says, I want you to take this gospel to the Gentiles. And everybody's struggling because it's like, you know, uh, it's changed. It's, it, something's changed. And that's the problem then in the church. How long have we been doing something and then the change came? And how long did it take before we make the adjustments to do that change? So now watch this in the, in the life of Paul. So uh, verse, uh, let's move on down to verse 5. So they're going to Jerusalem to argue this point out. Verse 5, but then some of the believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees, they stood up and insisted the Gentile converts must be circumcised and required to follow the law of Moses. So they were just continuing to do this. And Paul was like, no, I disagree. So the apostles, verse 6, I'm going to read verse 6 through 11. So the apostles and the elders met together to resolve the issue. At the meeting, after a long discussion, Peter stood and addressed them as follows. Brothers, you all know that God chose me from among you some time ago to preach to the Gentiles so that they could hear the good news and believe. And so Peter was the one that was chosen to preach to the Gentiles, okay? He didn't nearly have the revelation that the apostle Paul had, the message, but he was chosen to do that. He said, verse 8, God knows people's hearts. Thank, thank you, Jesus. I said, God knows people's hearts. People don't know people's hearts but God knows people's hearts. That's why I let people just say whatever they want to say, because they don't know my heart. Amen. They don't know your heart. But God knows your heart. That's, that, that's where you want it. You want God to, to want to know your heart. You're not concerned about people. God knows people's hearts, and he confirmed that he accepts Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us Jews. He made no distinction between us and them for he cleansed their hearts through faith. So why are you now challenging God by burdening the Gentile believers with a yoke that neither we Jews nor our ancestors were able to bear? We believe that we are all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's powerful, right? All right, now, now watch this, because this, this is reading 101 tonight. I'm, I, I, you know... I ain't keeping you long. It don't take no long time to straighten this out. All right, now watch this. Go down to verse 19, verse 19 and 20. And so they're getting ready to give their judgment. Do they have to keep the law? Watch this. And so my judgment, Peter, is that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are 
turning to God. Gentiles are anybody that's not a Jew, okay? He says we shouldn't make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write and tell them to abstain from eating food offered to idols, from sexual immorality, from eating the meat of the strangled animals, and from consuming blood. All right, so here's the deal. Why would you ask this? You're saying, all right, we're not going to make it difficult for them so they don't have to keep the law, but we would like you to observe these four things. We would like you uh, to observe, uh, don't offer food to idols, sexual immorality, uh, don't eat the meat of strangled animals, and don't consume blood. If you could keep those things, that would be that would, that, would be, that would work for us. Now, why would he ask that? Well, the next verse tells you. For the laws of Moses have been preached in Jewish synagogues in every city on, 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 the, on every Sabbath for many generations. In other words, he's saying, dude, we just can't go in here with this. If you, you, it, they, they've heard, don't eat, don't eat a strangled animal, don't drink the blood. They've heard these things forever. All right, now think about if you grew up and you heard something just all your life, just all your life, but then your liberty of grace, uh, this is so important because we got to learn how to use wisdom instead of becoming so dogmatic about people because we don't know their heart. We think we can judge them, but you don't know that sometimes it takes wisdom, like Paul said, that, that when you're in a certain place, you become a certain thing for that right? Because you're, you, you just can't go in all hard and, and offensive and offending everybody. It's going to take some wisdom to, to become what you need to become in order to get, you, get people where, where you need to get them. And, and, and that's why we got to be careful, uh, you know, when, when somebody might be a, a sinner, all right? So that don't mean you sin with them, but you're still going to be nice and kind and show the fruit of the Spirit so you can gradually bring them into doing something that needs to be done. There's some people who go in under the disguise of something else. You think the whole time they're this, but they're just wearing the disguise so they can get in, and then the power of God can, can, can go ahead and use them. And I'm telling you, we have got to be careful about this. He's just simply asking. They've heard this all their lives. We got to be careful not to, to, to offend these, these people. And so, he told them to abstain from these things for the sake of the Jews. He's asking for the Jews. For the sake of the Jews, could y'all stay away from this? For it would be such an offense for them to eat food offered to idols and strangled. So this is so important for us to remember today. Why am I telling you this? Listen to me carefully. We should not use our freedom of grace to offend or cause problems for others. We should not use our freedom of for grace to offend or cause problems for others, but rather we should walk in respect and walk in love towards each other. I can, I can, I can rock with that, that we walk in respect and we walk in love towards others. Let's just say, for example, if I preach to you all your life, don't eat pork, don't eat pork, don't eat pork. Um, and then, you know, I'm in the freedom of grace and I come in and I say, you know, you can eat the pork. See, that, I'm causing problems. I'm, I'm offending people. And what I'm praying, I'm asking God, show me how to minister to people and groups of people and nations of people with wisdom, with respect, and with love. I know that I have the freedom of grace. I know, you know, that, uh, you know, some Christians think, oh, my God, if I miss the mark there, then I'm going to hell. Well, I'm not going to come up directly to him and say, oh, don't pay no attention to all that stuff. You ain't going to no hell. Uh, <laughs> you, you're messing with something. You need to, all their life they heard this kind of thing. So, Lord, give me wisdom. Show me how to move in stealth mode so that you can use me to do something in their lives without me offending them. Show me how to respect them and show me how to love them. I told you before, the number one thing that God is concerned about is how we treat one another. You, 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 I don't, you know, you, I don't care how, how, how grotesquely involved you are in something, it, it, there's no excuse for disrespecting people, and there's no excuse for walking out of love 
while you call yourself a Christian. You are a Christian. We should respect people. I, 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 I try to respect everybody no matter what's, what, what may be going on. I might walk in a trail full of, I don't even know who they are, but I'm going I'm to walk in respect and I'm going to walk in love because people will remember that. And people will decide that I can serve your God and go to your church because I met you outside of the church and you treated me nice and you treated me with respect. I'm going to cut you off because you're going to hell and I ain't going to be associated with you. Well, somebody was associated with your hellacious self. <laughs> you remember when you were hellacious and somebody was associated with you? And it ministered to you. How much? It doesn't cost much to be kind, but I think we're losing the art of kindness in the church. We're losing the art of respect in the church. And it, it's, it'll put you in a position, if you're not careful, where you will lose your influence to even witness the people after they see how you act. Just a, just a little, little side note here. Isn't that the truth, though, right? We have got to respect people. And, and, and so if I'm around somebody and I know all their life they heard not to eat pork, then I'm, I'm not going to eat it that day. If I'm around somebody and, you know, they... You know, they heard, well, you know, I don't know what it is. They, they, they may think uh, muscadine juice is wine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll stay away from it. I'll stay away from it because I want to respect their situation and then ask God to give me wisdom so I can minister to them slowly and show them Scripture and show them I love them first yeah. instead of just using them as an argument to try to display how much I know. Can't stand that. You arguing and, you know, you all that because you think you all that because you know a little something. All of us got a lot of growing to do. All of us, we don't know as much as we think we know. We just know what we know. But you can always learn something. You can learn something from a, from a wino in the street if you look long enough. Amen. Amen. All right, verse 24. Uh, we understand that some men from here have troubled you and upset you with their teaching, but we did not send them. Verse 28, he says, For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no greater burden on you than these, than these few requirements. You must abstain from eating food offered to the idols, consuming blood, meat that strangled, and sexual immorality. If you do this, you will do well and, and fare well. And so, basically, this is Paul's start. And uh, he's preaching the gospel, but at the same time, he's learning and getting some wisdom. So, we look at the letters of Paul. And so, if you look after the book of Acts, you see Paul coming in here in Romans, and he greets you, and all of the letters of Paul are basically going to be preaching this gospel, and it is we are saved by grace through faith. That's, that's, the, that's the sum of it. We are saved. In other words, he's saying to you, you are not saved by something you have done. You, have not sa you are not saved by your works. You are saved by the grace of God, and you by faith now receive that. And so what the church is trying to do is put everything on your works. And, you know, if you got to work it, you sweat, you do all those things, and you deserve something. We're not talking about what you deserve. What we deserve is hell. But what we got because of Jesus, what we got was salvation through the grace of God by the faith that has been given to us. Amen? So this is what Paul is preaching. And in preaching this, Paul is going to have to combat all of the preaching of works because the law was all about what you can do to deserve something. But these letters uh, uh, that, that came uh, from the Apostle Paul, these letters were all about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He, he, he is now revealing the reality of the Old Testament, the pictures and the shadows. The, the letters of Paul, it's, it's, it's all about Jesus. It's about Jesus, what he has done for us, it is, about, it is about Jesus. 
and, 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 and who is full of grace and full of truth. And so the, all of the letters are going to end up, no matter from Romans all the way through until he's finished writing, his, it's going to be about Jesus, the grace of God, the mercy of God, and you taking it by faith and not by your works. And the whole thing is about, and I understand what Paul was talking about now, is trying to get you to come away from your self-righteousness to righteousness that comes from him. He's trying to get you to come away from your works and thinking you deserve or earn something by your works and have faith in Jesus knowing that everything is finished, everything's done. On the cross, he said it is finished, so it was finished then. It's done. It's, it's done. So, somehow, the church has been taught you've got to do. And, and what Paul was teaching was it, Jesus is already done. And then you're like, but I got to do. And Jesus has said, no, it's already done. And, and you're still talking about what you got to do. And, and, and even the rich young ruler came up and he said, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus was trying to tell him, he says, man, God is good. God is good. Believe and accept him. And, and, and we're still today, even after all of these years, and, and, and the thing that fascinates me, there was always somebody on the earth preaching the gospel, and there was always somebody on the earth persecuting the people that were preaching the gospel. I mean, the, the Scripture even says, even until this day, okay, there'll always be somebody planted here and commissioned to preach the gospel. And something that'll be similar with all those guys is I don't think you can preach the gospel of grace just so consistently without facing the persecutions and the trouble and uh, the pain and all that stuff that goes on because that grows you up because it's a huge deal to take somebody that's been in your Baptist church all your life and you heard certain things all your life and then you come to World Changing with your mama on Mama's Mother's Day and you hear something totally different, okay? And, and, and we're going to see here how even Peter said, this stuff was hard to get. It was hard to understand. And so, we move to Galatians chapter 1, where now Paul has, the whole book of Galatians was written for the purpose of going against this teaching of you have to keep the law to be saved. You've got to be, um, you, you've got to be circumcised in order to be saved. And so, Galatians 1 one through three in the NLT, I'll read it again. He said, the letter is from Paul and the apostle. I was not appointed by any group, Paul says, or people or any human authority, he says, but by Jesus Christ himself and by God the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. He says, all the brothers and sisters here joined me in sending this letter to the churches of Galatia. So they all joined to send this letter to the church of Galatia because uh, some, of the, uh, some of the apostles were preaching the law again. And so he says, verse 3, May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Jesus gave his life for our sins, just as God our Father planned in order to rescue us from the, this evil world in which we, uh, we, uh, we live. All glory to God forever and ever. And it's just like over and over and over again. And then Paul comes here and he says, I am shocked. This is the first thing he says to the Galatians. So they were getting some, a, a foothold in, the, in, in that teaching on you got you to keep the law in order to be saved. And he said, I'm shocked that you're turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be good news but is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. Verse 8, let us curse, let God's curse fall on anyone, including us or even an angel from heaven who preaches a different kind of good news than the one we preach to you. I say again, what we have said before, if anyone preaches any other good news than the one you welcome, let that person be a curse. I don't know who, who I'm thinking, did anybody see that? Besides me, it's like, it, we, what, what did he just say? Don't. This is the gospel that Paul preached. It should be the gospel that we all should be preaching. But that's not happening. That's not happening. There's so many people still preaching under the law, and they're still preaching the things that Paul said that shouldn't be preached anymore. And somebody says, well, preaching doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Do you realize the accountability that a preacher is going to have to give when he goes to heaven? 
Do you understand understand what I'm saying? And that's why I can't afford to be in bondage to people. I got to say things that they won't say now. They'll say it 20 years from now, but they won't say it now. I remember uh, probably 30 some years ago when I started preaching on prosperity and I defined prosperity. I said prosperity is not just money. Prosperity is wholeness, the whole pie. And they thought that was, I mean, they, they, they thought that was the craziest thing they ever heard from in life. And you know, 20 years later, that's the common definition in the body of Christ. So it happened. But, you know, a, an apostle has to be the errand boy to carry a message, to, tr to knock the trees down, tread the grass down, lay the pavement, and one day it will be a clear path to walk. But somebody had to go through hell, moi, in order to be able to <laughs> preach, <laughs> in order to be able to preach the message in order to be able to preach the message. And uh, that's, nobody ever went through as much persecution as Paul. I mean, imagine Paul, he finally got born again. Get this picture of Paul, he dies, he goes to heaven, and now in heaven he's meeting all the people he sent there. Oh, wow. Now, here's the deal. In heaven he meets all the people he sent there, and there is not one bit of all or unforgiveness is total love that comes from them to the point where it probably freaks him out a little bit because it's like, don't y'all know what I did? And they're like, you don't understand. You did us a favor, but we didn't know it and you didn't know it. <laughs> it's a powerful thing. And the world is so crazy now, the mindset, the, the division, the, you know, the vision is so, so interesting. Let me address that just for a moment. Yeah, I try not to, but division is so interesting. Division can come so easily. If you magnify the difference, you've created a division. So whatever you're comparing, if you magnify the difference with this one situation or one person, you cre you've created a division already. It's that simple. And, you know, if I, took, uh, if I took two women and put them up here and I magnified the difference with one woman, I got a problem with the other one. I took two kids, put two kids up here, magnified the difference with one, and then, you know, all of a sudden the other. You, you, you create a, a divide. So one of the things that I've recognized that I have to be cautious to not magnify a difference so that I won't increase the, or further divide what's already divided. So there are certain things I try to refrain from talking about right now, this is not the time right now, um, that I'll be talking about later. I'm so amazed how I just, I, the, the, the world, the Christian church world seems to never, I'm, I'm just, I'm not amazed, I'm just so amazed at them. They're, they're, I don't even know, I don't even understand. It's like, are you, you really saved? <laughs> it, it, it's something, but magnify the difference. That's how it happens. Magnify the difference, and all of a sudden you've created. It may be small, it may just be a seed, but if you keep magnifying the difference over something or magnify the difference over someone, eventually you have created division because, because you did that. It's just it's a serious thing. Our, our nation right now, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it needs wisdom. It needs godly wisdom, and that's going to come from godly people who understand um, I think what God's going to let you understand. But this thing's coming to a close. I think Jesus is, is, is I think Jesus' return is sooner than we think. There's another blood moon, I think, the other, the other day. It's sooner, sooner than what you think. Sometimes you can kind of get lowered in to just kind of like really not paying attention to what's going on, and, and boom, it, it's happening. It, it's it's going to be much sooner than what you think. I mean, just look at it. Things just don't make sense. It's like, you remember the scripture that says they'll take the truth and call it a lie and a lie and call it a truth? Are we not there yet? It's like, I promise you, you don't even know who's telling the truth right now. You turn TV on, you just like, they probably lying, huh? you know. You know, man, that hamburger tastes good, they lying. I had some, a, a company, they're trying to verify who I am, and they looked me up on Wikipedia, and they told me that I'm not who I say I am. <laughs> I said, how, how, how do you, you have my driver's license, you have my, my everything I told you to get, and, and I said, okay, well, who am I? 
They said Michael Smith. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, that's like a rumor for, what, 30 years ago? And, and somebody bought it and wikipedia that thing. And I was like, that's... So I'm thinking, for real? I said, you want to put my mom on the telephone? You're telling me that I'm not who I say I am. And then, there are whole, obviously, there are whole lots of people who are me. I met one in the grocery store one night. Somebody hollered Creflo, and we both said, yeah. <laughs> you ask God to help increase your life in love. You ask God to help increase your life in the fruit of the Spirit. You ask God to help you to be a more loving person, a more kind person. I'm not looking for you to do it. I'm looking for you to depend on God to make in you something that you can't make by yourself. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's see. All right, let's go to, let's go to uh, something else. For, I got about nine minutes. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3, 15 and 16. 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16. So we can see how Peter in a letter even mentioned Paul and his teachings in a positive way. Peter had obviously read Paul's letters. Um, and for a Jew, reading Paul's letter, the teachings that the Old Testament was over must have been a shock. Something too, something too hard for him to understand. Look at this, uh, verse uh, 15. Uh, he says, And consider that the long suffering of our Lord 2 Peter 3, 15. And considering that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our brother, beloved brother in Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, he's talking about the wisdom given to Paul, as written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand. Peter says it's hard to understand this this stuff that Paul's writing, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the Scriptures. So Peter here is acknowledging and, and mentioning in a positive way the teaching of the Apostle Paul as he read those letters. So in the New Testament, those letters written by Paul, you know, Peter says, it's a lot of stuff that's hard to understand because we were told this, we were trained this way, this is how we were brought up. And now the guy who encountered Jesus was told to do it this way, and we can see it, and the Holy Spirit now is helping them. See, that's the, that's the key. Holy Spirit begins to help you to, to do these things. I chose to teach this on a Wednesday night Bible study because I believe you guys get it, and you'll open your Bible up, and you, you'll, you'll look at it and say, all right, this is the Old Testament, shadows and pictures. This is Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's going to give a testimony of the life of Jesus. These, this is the book of Acts written by Luke. This is the uh, letters of the Apostle Paul. And the next week, we're going to talk about some letters of Peter, James, and James was a pastor, and see how all of those fit into this situation as well. Let me show you one more scripture, and then we'll hang it up for the night. So a majority of the letters in the New Testament is written by Apostle Paul. You know that. And in them, Jesus was fulfilling the God, the Word of God by explaining the new covenant and the new way by the grace through faith. Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 9, as we've already said, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. These letters of Paul completely, completely changed us from a work-based uh, religion to believing what Jesus has already done. Everything over here uh, was setting us up for everything that Jesus was going to be the reality of. Jesus is the reality of everything that was talked about in the Bible until he actually showed up and the Word was made flesh, okay? When He showed up, we no longer, and this is why, we no longer need to continue to go back to shadows and pictures when the reality is standing right in front of us. We don't need to do that anymore. And so, 
It's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. Get to know him, learn about him, study him, walk with him, because you're going to spend eternity with him. So you might, you might as well get to know him now. Amen. Jesus is your answer for everything. He's a real person. He wants to do amazing things in your life. He wants to do the work. So would you please stop trying to do it? He wants to do the work. Like I told you, Jesus is not walking beside you. He is walking in you. And he wants to do the work on the inside of you if you let him. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. So Jesus knows how to keep you from falling. Uh, and then he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It's the Spirit who produces the fruit in you. There's so much that Jesus wants to do in you if you will let him do the work. He does the work. He will work in you to give you the desires to do what pleases him. But you keep trying to do the work to get the desire or to discipline yourself to have a desire. And, and we've got to understand, Jesus says, I will do that. I will change your desires. I'll take your old want-tos and give you the new want-tos, and you'll want to do something you didn't used to want to do. And then you'll get to the place where you don't want to do something that you used to like doing, praise God. He's going to get the glory for this. We're not going to get the glory for none of it, so don't, don't stop all of this trying to sweat to try to make something happen so you can pat yourself on the back and tell yourself how brilliant you are. Because here's the deal, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I've been working on this for the last several weeks. There is a difference now between what you can produce through your human work and effort and versus this divine level that can only come by grace. There's a divine level. It's the final level for Christians. It is the place for Christian people, this divine level where God working through you will take all the glory for the stuff. Glory to God. I'm feeling something right now. Hallelujah. I don't mean to feel none, but I, 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 I'm just telling y'all, man, God is working in you, and he's going to bring you to a divine level, and things you didn't think you were going to be able to do, you're going to find yourself doing. You, you can, forgiveness is going to be so easy for you because the Holy Spirit's got you moving in a divine level, and it's stuff working in you that you have to back up and say, how did that get in me? How did that get in me? Because you've been dependent on God. And now he's been working in you. And the, and the fruit is showing up. And you the branch, hallelujah, and the branch, the branch gets to display the fruit. You don't make the fruit, you display the fruit. And Jesus is working in you right now. So that's the letters of the Apostle Paul. Read those letters. That's how we're supposed to be living today, according to those letters of the Apostle Paul. And you're going to need the Holy Spirit to help you, just like the, the uh, uh, apostles of old needed the Holy Spirit to help them. The letters are there, but you need to read them. Read those letters of the Apostle Paul. Realize what he's saying. And every time you read about Paul talking about works versus faith, you notice what he's saying. We are saved by what? Grace. But we got it how? Through faith. Amen. You get anything out of that tonight? Now, Father, we, we, we so thank you for, uh, we're, just, we're just going at this thing methodically to get a hold of how to interpret this Bible and open it up and reading it and understanding these uh, places. And, and, and I ask that you just help all of us as we go on this journey that, uh, you know, areas that we've learned all of our lives that may need to be corrected, show us those areas that need to be corrected. Help us, Holy Spirit, to understand the way that we should understand according to your word. And we thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Which one of y'all want to come up here and finish this thing up here? I love y'all. Good to see you tonight. How about this, like, getting dog like this? I don't like that. I'm... I, I walked out of the house today, come, come in here, and I got to sleep. It's like it's time for me to go to bed. <laughs> love y'all. <laughs>
So it's really simple. There's no, <laughs> no complicated way of receiving Jesus. It's simply just believe what he has done. Amen? So if you do not know Jesus and you're at home right now, I want you to simply repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord God, I realize and admit that I'm a sinner. And right now I ask you, come into my heart, change me, cleanse me, and make me new. I believe that you died for me, and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. And by faith, I declare that I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Well, if you just prayed that prayer of salvation, I want you to simply pull out your phone and text the keyword, I'm saved. That's one word, I'm saved, to 51555. You'll simply provide your name and your email address, and we will send you. We have a free ebook that we want to give you as a gift today. Amen? Amen. And also, if you are here, man, this is an amazing, not only church, but ministry to be a part of, to be a part of this World Changers Nation. Amen? And if you are here, you're like, man, look what God is doing. Like, he's not only revealing himself to me, also through me and in me, but he's also walking it out and perfecting everything that concerns me. And right now, we want to give you the opportunity to be able to sow into this ministry, to be able to give, because we give from a place of we get to, not that we have to. Amen? So if you would like to sow tonight, we do have our, our ushers here if you're in the building. You can simply raise your hand and we have an offering envelope we can get to you. But also you can also text the word world changers, leave a space and then your amount and text that, text that to 74483. You can also call 1-866-477-7683. You can also mail in your, your gifts to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349. Or if you're online, just simply go to worldchangers.org or curfloodollarministries.org. Amen? Amen. God is doing the work in us, man. It's mind-blowing to think that he's just like, just rest. Just rest. Let me do the work. Let me take the will. Amen? You sit back in that, in that passenger seat. You let that seat back. Let me do the work. Amen? Amen. Amen, amen. Everybody had a chance to give? So we all know our homework. We got some letters to read, right? So if you haven't already, let's get to these letters, man. Amen? Amen. All right, all right. I'm going to go ahead and pray over the offerings. Before I do that. <laughs> Ushers, you are free to collect the offerings. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do it through me, Lord. Do it through me. Have your way. Have your way. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely getting darker real quick. My daughter's falling asleep real fast. I'm like, ooh, go to bed. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. It's late. It sure is. Good night. <laughs> amen. All right, I'll go ahead and pray over the offerings now. So, Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord, for each and every seed that has gone out tonight, Father. We thank you, Lord, that it will go and grow in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord, for the harvest and the return on it. And just thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone, you can stand to your feet, and I will get you guys out of here. All right, everyone, you can raise your hands. So, Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this night. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are and all that you continue to be, not only to us but through us, as you continue to reveal yourself to each and every one of us individually and specifically. We thank you, Father, for causing our thoughts to be agreeable with your will. And we thank you, Father, that we are in the right place at the right time at all times. And everything we do works. There's no failure in us, and we bless the works of our hands right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Father, that all is well. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us, be blessed, be bold, be unashamed, and continue to represent him well. You all have an amazing night. Y'all drive safe. Love you guys.
You asked and we answered. We know there are friends of the ministry who prefer CDs and DVDs. But for those of you who find the digital versions of messages better fit your life, Creflo and Taffy Dollar's message series are now available as digital downloads in the CYWE store. Log on to CYWEstore.com today to see the whole catalog of new and re-release messages that can be downloaded to any device for easy and convenient listening. Oh, oh, oh.